Hello and welcome back to NHB Retro. Today we're going to uh, be putting together another project. This one is a, an XT IDE card for uh, adding IDE support to old uh, ISA, 8-bit ISA computers such as my 5150 that I recently restored. Um, this is one that I uh, got off a seller on eBay. It looks very well uh, put together. This is what the kit comes with here. We've got uh, package of components. There really are not that many. This is a fairly simple looking card. Um, we've got a, the, the ID connector itself, some switches and some chips. Uh, and then of course the uh, circuit board itself. Uh, pretty nice looking circuit board. Uh, it's got all the um, components really nicely labeled. Uh, all the resistors have their values. Uh, all the capacitors are, are just marked C, but I believe they are all the exact same value, so that makes that easy. Um, yeah, let's uh, get this going, uh, and we'll get it put together. All right, as always, we're going to start with the uh, lowest profile uh, components first. In that case, in this case, that is the, these uh, uh, capacitors. Uh, there's a few of them, but not really that many. Uh, let's just get them bent, uh, populated onto the board, and soldered down. All right, and just like that, all the capacitors are in place. Um, now let's go with the next uh, lowest profile components, which I believe is gonna be the resistors. So uh, we'll start with the 10K resistors first.
All right, and there we have all the resistors. There really are only four in this design, uh, at least of these individual ones. Uh, up next are the resistor packs, of which there are two. Um, I believe they are exactly the same. And these just have a, uh, you know, there's a spot on the pack itself corresponding to the square pin on the motherboard. I'm just going to hold these down with some painter's tape. Hold them in place. And there are those uh, resistor arrays down on the board. Up next, uh, we're going to uh, get the sockets in place, which uh, actually I left in the house. I will be right back. Okay, let's go ahead and get all those sockets in place.
And there are all the sockets. Uh, let's see, up next, let's go ahead and get this lone capacitor installed. All right, and there's the card with all the um, all the headers and jumpers, uh, the LED, etc. in place. Um, some of you may have noticed I, I got a, bit, a little bit crazy with the uh, sockets, and I put sockets where these two switch uh, dip switch rows should be. I had, so I had to <laughs> had to remove those sockets and put the dip switches in there. Uh, but yeah, now we're ready to put the the final connector on and uh, get the chips in. And there we have the card with the uh, IDE connector installed and all ready to go. I'm going to take a pass at cleaning some of this flux off the back, uh, pop the chips in, and then we should be ready to uh, put it in a machine and see about getting the, uh, the EEPROM programmed. All right, I've got the um, XTIDE card set up in the 5150. I booted it up and one of the neat things about the XTIDE is that you can configure the ROM image and burn it to the ROM in the system, so on the card. So I'm going to do that now. I, I'm going to run the XTIDE config utility here, if I can spell it right. to load a BIOS image from file. I believe I want the XT bin, so I'm gonna go with that one. Loads it up. And then we're going to need to configure it. Now I do already, I did already do a test run and burn an existing one to the EEPROM, so that's there, but we're gonna skip that, just configure the one that we've loaded. I'm going to go for the primary controller. We want to set the device type. This is important. And I have my XTIDE set to configure to a compatibility mode, so we're going to tell it that it's a Rev1. And I think all the rest of this is just fine. Yes. I think that's all the configuration we need to do. Now let's just check the boot settings just for the heck of it. Right, that's all fine. And then from here we can actually just flash the EEPROM with the one that we've just configured. successfully. Now we're going to boot. Going through the normal 5150 boot up process. I'm sure it's looking at the RAM right now. 
I still only have 256k of RAM in this machine, though I do have um, a new RAM card on the way. Okay, and now there we go. We're into um, the XTIDE. Huh, something is wrong. Okay, so now uh, we're, we're booting up. We see the the ID, XTIDE menu, and it's booting off the C drive. Um, and for now, I've just sort of copied all the DOS stuff uh, right to here. And so there we go, um, set up and working um, off the off the CF card. Pretty cool. Now, to get it to work, I did have to uh, boot under this version of DOS, which I believe it's 3.3, on uh, one of my modern machines and format the card there. For some reason, I couldn't get it to format here. Um, not sure really why that was, but yeah, once I did that, uh, then everything just seems to work. Um, pretty cool. So yeah, that was uh, much easier than I thought it was going to be. Um, Pretty neat little system, very easy to put together, very, very fun, fun project. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it, and um, I will see you on the next one.